Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Captain's Log, Subdates 22128.9 Is it bad that I need more advocate already? Maybe I should see if we can set some kind of personal best for beverage consumption. And of course, Poundland swag purchased. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'd like to talk about Liver King, a topic that was hot a few days ago, but as is often the case on this channel, I'm much too late to the party. But I've got some comments I'd like to add, especially when someone like Liver King looks like an Adeptus Astarte going through the Primaris Rubicon, and I'd very much like to see him actually suit up in some power armor, artificer armor, Phobos armor, and cleanse this world of the filthy Xenos in the name of the Emperor. <laughs> much like a space marine, he can live on pretty much anything, because he really believes it and he's true and honest to his cause, he's not a dirty filthy cheat, no. Now while he may look like that, there is obviously a separation, he's not tall enough for example, he would at best be an enhanced human, akin to that of Corferon, or Luther. How is Meg such an expert on this? My name is derived from a Primarch, I am Altharius. <laughs> Liver King made the news because an email leak came to light. The email itself though shines a rather interesting light on Liver King and his mantra, his beliefs, what he espouses, the character, and proves it all to be a massive lie. Something you all need to know though, before YouTube, Liver King was already successful. He was already wealthy. He was already in a rather good place. Liver King to an extent reminds me of Jack Murphy, another person who espouses a very alpha male lifestyle. Also a fraud, because he's as beta as Fook. And it's quite amusing when you trigger him about it. Sidney Watson did a rather spectacular job of it. Liver King himself hasn't looked so good when he's made appearances on podcasts talking about his lifestyle, which now that we know about the emails, makes his appearances on those respective podcasts where he's looked a bit uncomfortable all the more interesting. Almost like the right question was asked, and he became ever so slightly squeamish. I can't help but wonder why. What is it with these space marine wannabes and their absolute frauds for existences? By the way, with what we're going to go through in the email, I'm going to give you a fair warning. The contents of it, when you hear about the dosages, well, somebody is drinking what can only be described charitably as unicorn's blood, effectively giving you a half-life, which seems somewhat contrary to the very life you believe people can have if they live the life you live all clean, Mr. King. I have no doubt I'm not the only person to have pointed this out, but I have to admit, it is quite tragic when somebody builds something on a lie. Additionally, I don't think anyone for a second genuinely believed that Liver King was ever clean. No one gets a body as big as that by being clean. They really don't. We're just happy you haven't been injecting your arms with baby oil, like others in Russia, who think that making their biceps look big when the rest of their body looks like a stick insect makes them look big, tough, brave, strong, when in fact they just look like a dispenser waiting to burst. So what I'd like to do is start by reading through the email that everyone has seen, showing you some of the interesting components Liver King introduces to his remarkably clean mantra-riddled diet, where he totally doesn't cut any corner at all. And once we've gone through that, go with the fallout and how Liver King has responded to it. Because he does, which impressed me. By extension, we'll then be able to ascertain whether or not Liver King's response is a YouTube apology or an actual apology. So the email leaks are as follows. So stoked, thank you. What's a good day and time for you to have our consultation? I live in the Republic of Texas, so I am Central Standard Time. This is an absolute priority for me, so I will cancel almost anything planned to make this happen with you. Blah, 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 to interview. So let's dig right in. As it relates to my goals, I am the face of several brands, including Ancestral Supplements. 
and I've just hired a team to build the Liver King brand with the goal of 1 million followers by March 2022. I am pouring ridiculous resources into making this happen, including hosting a video guide that will be living at my guest house and a film crew that will be filming seven days a month. Stated, I have to stay in great effing shape year round, maybe take one to two months off a year. There's a reason for that for those who don't know, you cannot maintain that physique every single day, 365 days a year. Your body has to rest or you risk injury. So now you might understand why Joe Rogan has started questioning how Dwayne Johnson's managed to maintain his physique for as long as he has. I've been working out for 35 years. I know how to eat, train, rest, and recover. I even have a hard shell hyperbaric chamber at my house. But as I've reached my mid 40s, it's getting harder, and the back fat effing kills me. To support these exhaustive efforts, I've recently started taking Omnitrope, the 5.8 mg vials from Empower Pharmacy, 11k per month for my new dose, which is 4 vials a week, 16 vials a month. I don't know if this stuff is grossly underdosed or what but I've been taking two vials per week, and my IGF-1 is only at 139. My doctor told me I could double it in an effort to get to the upper 200s, low 300s. She thinks I could be a hyper non-responder. I'm wondering if taking a F-load of other peptides could be confounding the results and possibly interfering with efficacy. For instance, here's what I'm currently taking. Before I even show you that list, allow me to tell you why your doctor thinks it's a good idea to double the dose. It has nothing to do with being a non-responder. No, 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 no. It's because you're paying 11k a month for it, which means more money. Doctors like money in America, don't they? Yes, it really does get one's noggin joggin when they start to think, hmm, why would a doctor and a pharmacy want you to buy more of their substance when it's not showing you the results you think you deserve just yet? Huh, interesting. I wonder if eating all that liver is how this is working. All those enzyme producing organs you consume, maybe there's some life in them yet. Maybe they're building up your tolerance. Oh dear God. I don't know how much longer I can not laugh at you. Fun fact about Omnitrope. It is used for fertility treatment. It is a prescription medication that contains human growth hormone. So for example, children with growth failure due to growth hormone deficiency or GHD generally get prescribed this to help them. And I just wanna say, you're in your mid 40s and you are so desperate to cling on to this image, this character persona, this idea that you represent when you could by extension show people a graceful way of aging by showing them how to come down properly, how to go with some dignity. Let's call it that. Because you've mentioned back issues, I can't imagine they're gonna get any better if you push into your mid 50s and you're still carrying all of that. But it's the back fat, everyone. It's totally the back fat and not the spinal arthritis. So the first, IGF-1 LR, with Liver King indicating taking it for a year. This particular chemical is a synthetic protein and lengthened analog of human insulin-like growth factor one. CJC with IMAP. Now, as far as I'm aware, CJC-1295 is a synthetic analog of growth hormone releasing hormone. If that's the same one, I'm not entirely sure. Ibutamorin, taking for two months. This is a potent, long-acting, orally active, selective, and non-peptide agonist of the ghrelin receptor and growth hormone. Yeah, it's, it's more growth hormones. You guessed correctly, everyone. You already know about Omnitrope. And then you got more. You got cruise doses of test sip, and I don't know what that is at all. Winstrol, been taking for three weeks. Now, Winstrol is an androgen and anabolic steroid medication. It is used as a prophylactic to prevent the symptoms of hereditary angioedema and severity of attacks of angioedema. But it's more steroids, everyone. <laughs> you really are something special, aren't you? Real king, totally. If you were an athlete, you'd have been banned for life by now. Unless you were competing for the WBC and your name was Canelo Alvarez and your meat was totally from a different vendor. Many media outlets have covered this, which is where the fallout arises. When you have built an empire on a lie, yes, people are going to pounce on it, especially when you are someone as brazen and outlandish as that of Liver King. So on Instagram, he did in fact address this with the video that he had posted on YouTube. The caption read, a real man knows when it's time to look in the mirror to start taking full accountability for his actions. 
I have neglected to model two of the most important values I preach, honor and integrity. Today this changes, I owe you an apology. I'm not going to play the video in case of copyright claims, so I'm going to read a passage from it. It has been tricky as fudge to navigate. Clearly I did it wrong, and I'm here now to set the record straight. Yes, I have done steroids, and yes, I am on steroids, monitored and managed by trained hormone clinicians. Further stating that he wanted to raise awareness of the high, unalived rate amongst young men who suffer from depression or low motivation. Liver King the public figure was an experiment to spread a message. I've been on several podcasts, and when asked if I've ever taken steroids I've always said no. I don't touch the stuff, never gonna touch the stuff. That was a lie. Admitting that he kept denying the truth to himself and had dug himself into a deeper hole. Also admitting, I only have myself to blame. I did that and it was all wrong. I will be better. I will talk about it openly. I'm as sorry as a man can be and all I can do is take extreme ownership right now. Be better and lead myself to a better life as a better human. Which when compared to many other apologies, is actually quite impressive. Now yes, in the video itself, he likes to flex a little, a little humble brag here and there. Ignoring that and focusing on what he actually said, the substance of it, it is rare to simply admit wrongdoing. You can tell he's not really a YouTuber then. <laughs> now I'm going to cite Joe Rogan to finish this because it's a point I, well, I kind of agree with. I don't even know if there's a benefit in eating raw meat. From what I've understood talking to experts, there's actually a lot gained from cooking because the protein becomes more bioavailable. And this is something I've always wondered with Liver King, because I don't see the point in eating it raw. I really don't, other than the gimmick itself, which is how it looks like a gimmick. The thing is, if I'm going to watch anyone eat organs, it's going to be Hannibal Lecter, because he's a classy bitch, and you're a souped up ped bitch. Shouldn't you be standing guard over the Emperor's corpse? Oh mighty centurion, 